Weekly artificial intelligence and robot news. With every week past, AI and robotics set a new benchmark in their progress. But this AI system has not come without drawbacks either. The X factor is, both the advantages as well as shortcomings are quite amazing for us. Want to know in detail? Well, watch till the end. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and also press the bell icon to never miss an update about artificial intelligence, robotics, and future technology. That being said, let's begin. AI should not be used to make recruiting decisions. Using AI to hire people may do more damage than good. This was not done on purpose. Human resource managers typically begin AI-assisted recruiting procedures with good intentions, such as a desire to limit candidates to the most qualified and culture-matched candidates. These hiring managers are turning to artificial intelligence as a reliable objective technique to weed out the finest and brightest candidates from a large electronic stack of applications. The error comes when these executives believe that AI has been programmed to avoid the same biases that a human would have. In many circumstances, this does not occur. In others, AI designers have unwittingly taught algorithms to conduct acts that negatively impact particular job candidates, such as automatically rejecting female applications or those with names associated with ethnic or religious minorities. Many HR directors have been surprised to see that their hiring processes conduct acts that would result in termination if carried out by a person. Often, well-intentioned persons in positions of power strive to correct the programming flaws that are creating the discrimination. This code has yet to be cracked, as far as I'm aware. Clear outputs and outcomes, clean and clear data, and data at scale are all required for effective AI. When AI has access to scientifically measured data, which is not available in recruiting, it functions best. Complex overlapping biases and assumptions frequently muddle data on candidates' educational backgrounds, past work experience, and other abilities. It's for this reason that Illinois, Maryland, and New York City have banned the use of artificial intelligence in employment choices. CodePath has created a service that matches graduates with top tech jobs without the use of artificial intelligence or machine learning. Only absolutely objective data, basic rubrics, and compatibility evaluations are automated, and they are checked by persons who are sensitive to the issue of hiring bias companies could consider assembling teams of recruiting and technical specialists to track data, solve problems, and question AI outcomes regularly. If your AI is programmed to analyze data from organizations that have traditionally hired few women or minorities, don't be surprised if the algorithms provide similarly skewed findings. Leave the more sophisticated, confusing, or subtle filters to actual people who know the mix of knowledge and abilities that job seekers require to succeed. Consider software that automates some processes while allowing for human monitoring and final decision making. Following that, we got Google and Qualcomm will work to speed up AI development. Qualcomm announced a partnership with Google Cloud today at the Snapdragon Summit 2021 to bring the latter's neural architecture search to Qualcomm platforms. The move is intended to hasten the development of edge AI models. Qualcomm says that it will be the first system-on-a-chip SoC client to deliver Google Cloud Vertex AI neural architecture search services as a result of the announcement. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 mobile platform will be the first to receive it, followed by the Snapdragon portfolio spanning mobile, IoT, automotive, and XR platforms. As AI ML hardware becomes more widely available, the focus has shifted to the software stack, which frequently consists of point solutions. Qualcomm hopes to speed up the creation of AI models for Snapdragon at the edge by collaborating with Optimizing to build MLOps procedures for AI. Vertex AI Neural Architecture Search was launched by Google Cloud in May as a single platform for designing, deploying, and maintaining AI models. Vertex AI, according to Google, requires over 80% fewer lines of code to train models than competing platforms. Google claims it's the same toolbox it uses internally to power the company, which includes everything from computer vision to language and structured data. Vertex AI is made up of several technologies, but Qualcomm singled out the neural architecture search. Its goal, as the name suggests, is to improve AI models. The Qualcomm Neural Processing SDK will include Vertex AI NAS, which will operate on the Qualcomm AI engine. Through this partnership, Qualcomm Technologies will be able to construct and tune new AI models in weeks rather than months, and we're excited about the impact this will have on customers who use Snapdragon-powered products," said Jun Yang, Vice President of Google Cloud AI and Industry Solutions. 
Next, in brain surgery training, AI tutoring outperforms expert instructors. During a simulated brain tumor excision, machine learning algorithms improved technical performance and learning outcomes. The COVID-19 epidemic has given medical training with both obstacles and opportunities. In a variety of disciplines, remote learning has become more significant. According to a new study, an artificial intelligence AI teaching system can beat skilled human teachers in a remote setting. 70 medical students were recruited by the Neurosurgical Simulation and Artificial Intelligence Learning Center at the Neuro Montreal Neurological Institute Hospital to undertake virtual brain tumor removals on a neurosurgical simulator. Students were randomly allocated to either an AI tutor or a remote expert teacher for training and feedback, with a third control group getting no instruction. While a Deep Learning Intelligent Continuous Expertise Monitoring System ICEMS, and a panel of experts assessed student performance, an AI-powered tutor called the Virtual Operative Assistants VOA, used a machine learning algorithm to teach safe and efficient surgical techniques and provide personalized feedback. Students who received VOA teaching and feedback learned surgical skills 2.6 times quicker and performed 36% better than those who got training and feedback from distant instructors, according to the study. While researchers expected VOA students to experience more stress and negative emotion, they discovered no statistically significant difference between the two groups. VOA might be a useful tool for enhancing neurosurgeon performance, patient safety, and lowering the workload for human teachers. Ongoing research is looking into how in-person teachers and AI-powered intelligent tutors can work together most successfully. Intelligent teaching systems may make use of several simulation platforms to give nearly endless opportunities for repetitive practice. Next, we got humanoids that can provide excellent hugs. Physical interaction with humans should not be taken for granted, as robots find it particularly challenging and harmful. A human-to-human -human connection has many complicated aspects that robots just cannot comprehend. It's not just that robots are tough and people are soft. There is a slew of other delicate human-robot interactions that they're still learning about. They must be kind and sensitive in the context of therapy and elder care robots, of course. So far, Dr. Kuchenbecker and his colleagues have focused on hugs and haptic interactions. Hugs are quite simple to imitate when compared to more involved activities such as showering or rolling someone over in their bed. Huggybot would want to give you a warm cuddle. Huggybot's arms include sensors to guarantee that it provides a kind embrace rather than a life-threatening squeeze. But we're curious whether there are any fail-safe procedures in place if a sensor fails. Huggybot's back has another sensor that detects the human who is returning the embrace. The embrace is broken when they lift their arms or lean against the robot's arms, hopefully. Huggybot appears to be about as huggable as a robot could be. It's dressed casually in a grey sweatshirt and a long purple skirt, and its tablet has a cheerful look on its face. Huggybot's upper torso is inflated and heated to make hugging more comfortable. They even put stockings on the hands and covered the arms with foam. Huggybot is half-dressed, presumably to reveal what's below. Hugs are about both physical and emotional warmth. And while forming an emotional attachment with a robot or even an inanimate item is more difficult, it's not impossible. What if you could teach a robot to embrace you exactly the way you want? For added consolation, the robot could give you a couple of pats and some open-handed back massage if you're sobbing. Next, there's artificial intelligence technology that you can control from any location. To live up to its reputation, LG's air conditioner has created AI Thin Q, a voice-activated artificial intelligence AI, that allows you to manage and utilize your air conditioner more easily. It allows you to connect to Wi-Fi and make good use of it. Even from outside your home, you can easily regulate your air conditioning. LG's AI Thin Q technology is one of the smartest on the market. And Butterfly Group is the exclusive distributor in Bangladesh for this device. What is LG AI ThinQ technology? And how does it work? LG ThinQ is an artificial intelligence technology that enables air conditioners to assess real-time changes in the room and adjust the temperature accordingly. Overall, it's something you could like doing. If you understand how AI ThinQ technology works, it's simple to make the most of it. First and foremost, go to the Google Play Store and download the LG ThinQ app. You do not need to go through much to utilize AI ThinQ regularly after setting up its hassle-free manner to use it. Because it is one of LG's ThinQ labeled devices, the new air conditioner can be linked to smart speakers. 
Users may utilize this link to interact with LG's new cooling system by giving orders to Google Assistant or Amazon's Alexa, whichever is installed on the user's AI speaker. It's capable of learning about users' preferred setting patterns and then altering the settings based on who's in the room. The human future in an age of artificial intelligence is the next topic. Dean of the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing is Dan Hottenlocher, SM84, PhD, 88. He is in charge of the college's efforts to integrate computer science into all areas of study. Students learn how to utilize powerful tools like artificial intelligence safely and ethically. Early in the research process, the Common Ground program helps students comprehend the challenges related to computing's effects. Hutton Loker studied computer science and cognitive psychology at the University of Michigan as an undergraduate. He studied speech recognition, object recognition, and computer vision while working on his master's and PhD. He was captivated as a teenager by the ability of machines to immediately comprehend the world around them. He spent his summer's internship at startups in Silicon Valley and small tech firms in the Boston region. In 1988, Hutton Loker joined the Cornell Computer Science Department after working at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. He was particularly interested in connecting disciplines, particularly in the domains of computer science and engineering. He's now heading the drive at MIT to develop a campus that brings together academia and the digital industry. He believes that computing should be incorporated into the curriculum of academic courses. Next, a new chip rewires itself to let AI learn continuously. Much as the brain does, the brain's capacity to reorganize itself as it learns is one of the reasons for its amazing capability. Researchers have now developed electrical circuits that can do the same function. Efforts to emulate the brain in silicon, known as neuromorphic computing, have a long history and have attracted considerable funding from companies like Intel and IBM. Most research has so far concentrated on simulating the functioning and connections of biological neurons and synapses to replicate the brain's amazing learning efficiency. The ability of neurons to restructure themselves in response to experience is a trait that has gotten less attention. This remarkable capacity allows the brain to adapt its structure and function as it learns, allowing it to adapt to its underlying hardware to new obstacles on the fly. However, a team led by Purdue University researchers have revealed novel circuit components that can be altered using basic electronic pulses. They can effortlessly swap between resistors, memory capacitors, artificial neurons, and artificial synapses as a result of this. The innovation paves the way for hardware-based dynamic neural networks that can reorganize themselves as they learn, much like the brain. The new devices, which were published in Science this week, are composed of perovskite nicolate, a material whose electrical characteristics can be changed by adding hydrogen ions to certain points in its lattice-like structure. The researchers discovered that certain hydrogen ion combinations may produce conductivity patterns that mimicked a variety of electrical components. More crucially, they discovered that by using electrical pulses of varying voltages, they could shuffle the positions of these hydrogen ions. This allows the same device to take on the characteristics of a wide range of electrical building blocks on demand, allowing it to switch from one configuration to another. In addition, the gadgets are quite reliable. The researchers discovered that the hydrogen atoms remained in place for at least six months with no loss of resistance and that the switching behavior remained consistent after millions of cycles. Furthermore, the devices may be produced using standard chip manufacturing methods. While it's still early days, the researchers claim they're looking at combining these devices to make large-scale circuits. A silicon brain that can rewire itself in the same manner as ours can be just around the corner. Next, China's new robotic yak will assist ground troops, but it isn't as powerful as it appears. Chinese scientists are working on a big, four-legged robotic yak that can purportedly carry as much freight as two genuine yaks. The nameless robot is comparable to Boston Dynamics' RoboDog idea, which has gained popularity over the previous decade. China claims to have unveiled the world's largest, heaviest, and most off-road capable robot, the robot is supported by four spindly legs and a barrel-shaped torso, with a cargo-carrying metal rack on top. The Global Times, a government-linked Chinese newspaper, claims it can transport up to 160 kilograms, 352 pounds, and travel at speeds of up to 6.21 miles per hour. We might see legged robots on the battlefield shortly, if battery advancements can increase their range. Meanwhile, engineers have plenty of time to iron out the problems that People's Daily is attempting to hide. And that was this week's highlights in AI and robot news. 
With this being said, today's episode of our weekly updates on the newest futuristic technologies and robots comes to an end. Next time, we'll bring you even more exciting robots news. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with us. We'll see you at the next one. Until then, peace.